Okay guys, I wanna make this post on YouTube because a lot of people might not know this, but um, if you're doing the suspension, the rear suspension on, a, on the Yamaha Vipers, I'm not sure about the Articat version or not. Um, so basically, if you're doing any bogey work, um, we basically pull the bearings out here. Uh, these bearings here usually don't take a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of slot. They don't wear out as much as the bottom bogeys wheel. All the bottom bogeys welcome to this machine. I think this machine has five or 6,000 kilometers on it. Um, the bottom, all the bottom bearings were pretty dry except for the two side ones here, which I think were probably changed at one time because they didn't have a Chinese bearing. Yes, they used Chinese bearings in this whole sled. Um, the main shaft bearing is a pure China bearing. So anyways, um, nothing wrong with China, just the, sometimes the quality is crap. But anyways, um, bearings, on sled, bearings on sleds go dry. Anybody who rides a sled knows that. So this is the rear uh, bogey wheels in the back, these on the rear of the track right here, the inside and board ones. Um, there's two on the exterior. They're normal 6,004 bearings. You can press those out. Unfortunately, these ones here are casted in piece. I'll show you, I'll flip the camera and I'll show you, but uh, basically these ones go in the back and then you got these bearings on the outside here, sorry. But these ones here are just typical 6,004 bearings. You can press them out. You can do them by hand if you're really, if you're really, if you're really stuck. You can do them by with, a, with, your, um, with some sockets and punch them out. Um, they're pretty simple and then putting them back in you can do almost push them by hand but i'm gonna flip the camera and i'll show you here what's the problem with this rear assembly okay so like i said usually you just you know you pop your snap ring out and you put your bearing out and you change your basically these are just typical 6004 bearings um see these are the bearings i pulled out they're all they're all chinese bearings these are factory bearings this bearing is like notchy as hell um so anyways this assembly here usually just you know pop the bolts over here three bolts back here separate the bearing these the bogey wheels in half and then you get inside here but no they are actually casted in place so you have no way to change this whole set the only way to change the bearings the only way to do it is to change the whole assembly each side of this thing is worth 80 dollars us so you're talking like probably canadian over 200 dollars this assembly so i'm gonna try this summer this is my buddy's sled to take it put, put in the lathe and cut this down and keep the sleeve in there and then basically what i'm gonna do is um cut the sleeve down and then basically see if I can make a, a tool, make a groove in there and make it like a conventional snap ring. So if I do do, if this does work out, um, maybe I can get some guys to, if it does work out, they can send to machine, local machine shop um, and then get it cut and done. Now, the reason you do this is because um, one bad thing about this wheels is it's, it is all solid plastic. There's no rubber on it. It's not really replaceable, but this machine's got, like I said, it's got 5,000 kilometers on it and this doesn't have a lot of damage on it. Either is the rear bogey wheels. They're still pretty good. But, um, you know, this machine is 2014, I believe it is. So it is, it is eight years old. Um, but if you have a machine with 16,000 hours or 16,000 kilometers on it, you're, these are probably going to be wobbling in there. Um, I'll po I see I post a video in this video. When I first spun it, it was notching and feel going like it's, you feel the bearings are dry. There's rust inside there from sitting there. So, um, if this assembly goes while you're riding, uh, it's going to do some damage. It's going gonna, it's gonna to wobble around and if the bearing gets destroyed in there. It's going to wobble around and it's going to do some damage back there. So just food, just, just so you guys know that basically if, um, you're doing your maintenance every year, once a year, you should basically, um, do your rear bearing seals. And I'll show you real quick on the video here, how to, how to pull those out. So this thing you can see here, like watch, I'll spin the bearing here. That's catching there. You can actually feel it in my hand jerking like the, the bearings are toast. Okay guys, sorry I don't have anybody to hold my phone so I'm just jamming it up in here. So there's the pick tool here. Uh, this tool is this is a snap-on one, part number is right there. Uh, Blue Point makes this, a bunch of companies make this. Harbor Freight or Prinsal makes one. I basically go file and I file it down a little sharper. So basically what you do is you clean your bearing out and you'll pull the camera back up here more if I can work. There you go. So basically you take your, your tool and you push it gently in the side here like this. You rub it back and forth until it gets under the seal and then rock it forward. And then you might have to move it back and forth because you might catch a bearing. And try and do this so you guys can see. Push down on it and then yeah, you'll feel it. There you go, it's popped up now. So then once the seal's popped up, uh, 
it'll want to pop back down. But be very careful you don't break this, the uh, seal. Yeah, see, you damage the seal. This one, because I'm trying to pull the camera in place, I didn't get it, so. Anyways, this seal's toast now. I bent it, so there it is there. It's popped up. Kind of walk it back and forth, really dry, and there you go. So the seal's a little bit bent. Bend it back in place. I didn't, no, I didn't damage the seal itself. I didn't rip it, so basically you can put this, put this down on the, on the, on the table bench and then bend it back flat but what you want to do is you basically want to get the seal up so basically your tool in here and then pop this seal up but here's the issue these cheap these cheap bearings well this this actually is this uh nsx bearing which is a good bearing but when you get them out most times i've seen so far and you put them in what you want to do is you want to pop it on this side on the, the opposite side of the cage it depends on what cage we use a plastic cage on this side that's what's happening the problem so basically here let's do this here I'm trying to, sorry guys, I'm just trying to get the camera in here. I don't have, I wish I had someone to pull the camera. But another thing to do is clean this, clean this area with a peck or something so it doesn't bite down. Let me grab another bearing, another Chinese bearing. Ah, there we go, here's a China bearing here. Let's pretty clean this one here. So, we're going to get in here, push this way here. Back and forth. Try to get underneath the, the roller. There you go. And then be very careful on the, you don't rip the seal out. There you go. And I didn't, nope, didn't rip the seal. Mm, nope, didn't rip or bend it. So there you go. You pop your seal out and then repack your bearing and then basically take the seal and just pop it back in place. Pack your wheel bearing pretty tight and then spin it a bunch of time to get the bearing, bearing, the bearing grease in there. Spin it a bunch of time to get the bearing grease in there and then you'll see it start flattening out. Take your finger, flatten it out and then basically clean your seal out, lube it up and then pop back in place and make sure the outside lip is all pushed in. And then when you put it back in your, in your, um, when you put it back in here, the, this will hold the seal here also and also this ring here. So when you lift it off, pick a spot, like pick your, um, Pick a spot like your, your numbering and the lettering and then pick it from that spot and they can put this spot underneath here so it kind of keeps it in place and if it's ripped a little bit, st stops a little bit of water getting there. So anyways, I hope this helps some people out because it would have been nice if I would have seen this video. Um, I would have I known. But anyway, so what I did with lube this thing up, actually what I did was I, um, because we called around and basically there's no stock. I took a needle from a grease gun like this, and I basically bent the tip back. It's a cut in a, cut in a slash. I can't really sh I can show it there. Yeah, so I bent the tip back a little bit, and basically I wedged, wedged the actual needle. I don't know the camera on. I actually wedged the needle in between here and the seal very carefully, walked it back and forth, and I was able to get enough grease in there. It took me about six tries, but now, like, you notice the bearings. It's, it's got some grease in it. You can see down there, there's grease protruding on this side here. And then same thing with here. So I can save this thing for at least a season. Everybody knows the sleds. If you, if you do your maintenance in the wrong time of the year, um, you're going to be dealing with, you know, you work on your sled when it's snowing out. And we're supposed to get uh, 30 centimeters of snow on Monday. So my buddy wants to go riding. So all the maintenance is done on this thing. And we were kind of late in the year. So at least you can get out in the snow and ride for, you know, the season. And he's going to check out the back and give them a spin and see how they sound. Um, so hopefully... Yeah, hopefully that helps us out some people on there. Um, you know, if you have any suggestions, maybe someone else has done this and has some ideas on how to fix this. Maybe some company has a, a rear bogey wheel assembly. Uh, post below, let me know. Anyways, guys, hope this helps somebody.